This is Richard Hittleman welcoming you to Yoga for Life. You are about to embark upon a fascinating adventure into well-being, a journey which will leave you with a lifetime method for gaining unequaled health of body and mind and the sense of a new life. Please sit down easily and gracefully on your practice mat. Do that now and lower yourself slowly with control and poise. When you are seated, slowly extend both legs straight out before you and relax for a few moments. I feel it is important for you to know that yoga is the world's oldest and most effective system of physical and mental health and development. You will find these records a most convenient method for learning and practicing the wonderful yoga techniques. Use them as a supplement to my television program, Yoga for Health, or as a complete form of instruction in itself. Now, the records are designed so that you may use any single record for any practice session. However, for best results, it is suggested that you use sides 1 and 2 for your practice session on one day, and sides 3 and 4 for the next day, then back to 1 and 2, and so forth. Always place the illustrated booklet near you so that you may refer to the figures as necessary. And always remember that yoga brings progressive results, that is, each day, stiffness, tightness, and tension will gradually disappear as you regain youthful flexibility, strength, and vitality. Yoga for life means just what its title implies. You will feel alive. You will be alive by devoting from 20 to 40 minutes each day to these dynamic life-giving techniques. May I wish you every success in this wonderful venture you are about to undertake. And now, Yoga for Life. Now you are seated on your mat with your legs extended straight out before you. Keep your spine straight. Let us now learn the classical yoga method of relaxing in one of the lotus postures so that we can perform the wonderfully revitalizing complete breath. To do the half lotus, slowly bend your left leg at the knee, do that now, and bring your left foot toward you so that you can take it with both hands and place your left heel close into the groin area. Make sure that your left foot is against the inside of your right thigh, not underneath it. This is the position of figure one. Now, bend your right leg at the knee, take your right foot with both hands, and place it either in the fold of the left leg or on the top of the left thigh, whichever seems more comfortable. Sit erect. Touch the index fingers of both hands to the thumbs. This is the completed half lotus of figure two. Although your right knee may be up in the air, it will, as the stiffness in your ankles, knees, and thighs is removed, gradually lower itself toward the floor. So this is not a point of concern. Keep your spine erect, but not tense. Lower your eyelids. Now, remain absolutely still for several moments in this beautiful, ancient, serene posture. All right? Now, let us loosen up with the opposite side. That is, slowly extend both legs straight out before you. Do that now, and remember to move slowly and gracefully. Gently massage your knees with your hands for a moment. Now, let's do the opposite set of movements by bending your right leg at the knee. Do that now. Take your right foot and with your hands place the right heel into the groin area so that the right foot rests against the upper part of the left thigh. Now bring in your left foot and place it as before either in the fold of the right leg or on top of the right thigh, whichever is more comfortable. Sit erect. Touch the index fingers of both hands to the thumbs. Now the left knee may be up in the air. If this is so, do not be concerned, since it will gradually lower itself. Feel the posture on this side as compared to the other side. Now, choose the side in which the half lotus is the more comfortable for you and place yourself in the posture. Lower your eyelids. Relax. Remain absolutely still. At this point, 
If you have tried the half lotus on both sides according to the instructions and find that it is too difficult for one reason or another, then you should now sit in the simple cross-legged posture as depicted in figure three. Do that now if necessary. Remain absolutely still. Open your eyes. We are now ready to perform the complete breath. Breathe normally. Place your fingertips on your abdomen. Now, push out with your abdominal muscles and distend your abdomen as depicted in figure four. Repeat this movement two or three times by using your abdominal muscles to first contract or pull in with the abdomen and then slowly distend or push out with the abdomen. Try these movements several times, first pulling in and then pushing out. All right, stop. Now, place your hands on your knees and now pull in with the abdomen and expand your chest as much as possible. Do not be afraid to make this an exaggerated movement as you see in figure five, but you are still breathing normally. Do not hold your breath. Finally, Keep your chest expanded and still breathing normally. Raise your shoulders as you see in figure six, that is, as high as possible. But do not become tense and continue to breathe normally. Hold this final position with the shoulders raised and not tense, just for a moment. Now, very slowly lower your shoulders, very slowly. Relax your chest and easily return to the original relaxed position. Good. Now, we wish to make these three movements flow easily, one into another, so that there is a continuity. And we will count three for each of these movements, so that during the first count of three, we will distend the abdomen. In the second three, we will draw in the abdomen and expand the chest, and in the final three, we will raise the shoulders. We will then hold the final position for a count of three, and then easily lower completely in a count of nine. We will continue to breathe as normally as possible throughout these movements. Now relax. Breathe normally. And now, get set to distend your abdomen. Ready? Begin. One, two, abdomen comes out. Now, chest expanded. Six, and finally, shoulders raised. Nine, now hold. Two, three, now slowly relax. Four, five, six and return to the original relaxed position nine fine rest a moment now we wish to repeat these exact movements but now in conjunction with one long inhalation a short retention of the breath and then one long exhalation and all breathing both inhalation and exhalation will be done through the nose no mouth breathing First, we will exhale through the nose so that all air is emptied completely from your lungs. Ready? Do that now. Exhale through your nose so that the lungs are completely emptied. Now, get set to inhale. Ready? Begin. One, two, abdomen comes way out. Four, now chest expanded, six, and finally still inhaling, shoulders raised, hold. Two, three, now relax. Two, three, Four, and exhale all of the air from your lungs. Eight, nine. Now without pause, begin to inhale. Ready, begin. Two, abdomen out, chest expanded. Five, six, shoulders raised. Nine, hold. Let the blood take the oxygen, the life force. Release, two, three, and exhale all air from the lungs. Six seven now without pause begin to inhale ready one two abdomen out chest coming out shoulders raised hold close your eyes two three release two three slowly five relax six empty all the air from your lungs nine and now inhale very deeply ready way in three chest coming out six shoulders raised 
nine, and hold without being tense, three, release and exhale, three, four, five, six, eyes closed, lungs emptied, and this last time, inhale very deeply, ready, begin, two, three, now chest expanded, six, shoulders raised, nine, hold, the blood takes the life force, the oxygen, release and exhale, three, four, eyes closed, six, all air is now emptied, nine, keep your eyes closed, breathe normally, remain absolutely still, relax. Now, open your eyes and slowly stretch your legs straight out before you. Do that slowly. Gently massage your knees with your hands. Keep your legs together. We are now going to stretch away tensions as well as firm and strengthen the entire back and both legs with our rejuvenating leg stretches. Slowly and gracefully raise your arms before you to shoulder level. Do that now. Raise your arms with your hands together as in figure seven. Now, slowly bend backward at the waist so that your arms and hands are pointed upward as in figure eight. Keep your hands together. Now, perform a slow motion dive, bending way forward from the waist and take hold of the furthermost part of your legs that you can hold without strain. This may be your knees, calves, ankles, or feet. It does not matter how far forward you can reach. You are never to strain in yoga. Now, take a firm hold on your legs with your hands and let your elbows come outward and pull your trunk down gently as far as you can. Draw your forehead down toward your knees, as you will see in figure nine. Hold your extreme position absolutely still now for the following count of 15, two, Three, relax in this position for there is to be no strain, simply a stretch. Ten, the backs of your knees must be on the floor. Fourteen, fifteen, all right, fine. Now, very slowly straighten up, very slowly straighten up. And as you do so, bring your arms up with your hands together just as before. Slowly, now lean backward. And this time, go back as far as you can so that your abdominal muscles are brought into play. This will greatly strengthen them. Now, come way up and once again dive way over and down, very slowly, and see if you can come forward an inch or two further. Now, once again, hold the furthermost part of your legs you can reach without strain. And now, pull down gently. Draw your forehead toward your knees. Let your elbows bend outward, and this time we'll hold for 20 seconds. Two, three, absolutely no motion. Six, and no strain. Nine, backs of the knees on the floor. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, your neck completely limp. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Good. Now, slowly straighten up, very slowly, take your time. And this time, simply rest your hands on your knees. Relax. Keep your spine erect. It is the slow motion movement and the hold in the extreme positions that is unique with yoga and gives us tremendous benefits. With this type of movement, only a few repetitions are necessary. And that is why 20 minutes of yoga is worth hours of ordinary exercise. Now, we will stretch with the legs separately. Bend your left leg at the knee and bring your left foot toward you so that you can place your left heel close into the groin area, exactly as in the first part of the half lotus. This will be the position of figure 10. Now, we'll perform the exact same movements with our arms and trunk as we have just done. Only this time, we'll be stretching with the right leg only. Ready? Bring your arms up slowly to shoulder level with your hands together. Move gracefully with poise and balance. Now, bend as far backward as you can, and this is depicted for you in figure 11. 
Now come way up, over and down, take your time, and hold the furthermost part of your right leg that you can reach. Bend your elbows outward and draw your trunk down as far as possible. Let your neck go limp and allow your forehead to drop down toward your right knee, way down. This is the position that you will see in figure 12. Don't be concerned if your left knee is in the air. Hold absolutely still for the following count of 20. Three, four, the back of the right knee is on the floor. Eight, nine, feel the stretch throughout the leg and thigh and in the left side of your waist. This is a wonderful strengthening and firming movement. 19, 20. All right? Now, slowly straighten up, very slowly, take your time, and once again, bring your arms up slowly with the hands touching, lean back as far as you can go, and now very gracefully come way up, over, and down, and give your best effort this time. Hold the right ankle or even your foot if you can and this will certainly be possible with practice. Now the elbows bend outward as before, the trunk is drawn down and the neck goes limp. Lower your eyelids this time. Hold for 20, 2, 3, 4, absolutely no motion, 7, 8, 9, the back of the right knee on the floor, 14, 15, and this is also an excellent movement for firming and reducing excess weight in the thighs and the waist. All right, now very slowly straighten the trunk upward. Take your time. Now you're sitting erect. Now slowly stretch out your left leg. Massage the left knee gently with your hands. Now bring your right foot in and place the right heel close into the groin area. Let us do the identical movements with the left leg. Ready? Raise the arms, hands together gracefully and slowly, bend backward at the waist. Now, reach way up, over, and down, and hold the furthermost part of the left leg that you can reach. Close your eyes. Pull your trunk downward gently without strain. Bend your elbows outward. Let your neck go limp. Hold. Two, three, four. Keep your mind on what you are doing. Eight, nine, ten. The back of your left knee must be on the floor. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Keep your eyes closed and now very slowly straighten up Bring your arms up once again, hands touching, lean backward, make your abdominal muscles work as you come back. Now, give this your best effort. Come way up and over and down. Hold. Your elbows go outward. Keep your mind on what you are doing. Seven, eight, nine, and remember that these are the most wonderful stretching movements to relieve tensions and fatigue in your legs. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Good. Now, slowly straighten up. Take your time very slowly. Rest your hands on your left knee for a moment. Now, bring in the left leg and sit in the half lotus or cross-legged posture. Keep your spine erect. Relax. We are now going to perform two standing postures. 
Therefore, I will ask you to stand up now. Move slowly and gracefully and attempt to raise yourself with poise and balance. Stand erect and still on your mat. We are going to do first the side bend exercise for reducing and firming in the waist and thighs. Stand with your legs approximately two feet apart. And now, slowly raise your arms from your sides, palms facing down, until your arms are at shoulder level, and this will be the position of figure 13. Now, slowly begin to bend to your left. Bring your left arm down, and when you go halfway down, you will be in the position of figure 14. Now to attain the complete position, touch some part of your left leg and your right arm will automatically come up. Your fingers should be pointing straight upward in the final position of figure 15. If you cannot bend this far, simply go as far as possible, perhaps remaining in the position of figure 14. Now allow your neck to go limp and hold your position absolutely still for the following count of 20. Two, three, neck, limp, six, seven, eight. Feel the pull and stretch in the right side of your waist. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, no motion. Twenty. Now, very slowly straighten up until you are standing erect once again with your arms extended, just as you began. Now. Let us bend in exactly the same movements to your right side. Ready? Begin to bend to the right and go down slowly as far as you can. The ultimate position would be to have your right hand touch your right knee or calf and your left arm straight overhead. Let your neck go limp and hold your extreme position, whatever it is. Two, three, no motion. Six, seven, eight. This time, feel the pull and stretch in the left side of your waist. Fifteen, sixteen, left arm way over, nineteen, twenty. All right, very slowly straighten to the erect position. Take your time. Your arms are still extended. Now, move your feet slightly further apart. And let's bend off to your left once again. Ready? Begin to bend slowly. And this time, attempt to stretch an inch or two further. You're going off to your left. You're going to attempt to touch your left leg. Hold. Two, three, four. Remember that your neck goes completely limp. Eight, nine, ten. And to get the greatest stretch, bring your right arm way over your head. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right? Very slowly, straighten up to the erect position. Take your time. Do that slowly. Keep your arms extended. And now we will bend for the last time to your right. Ready? Bend slowly. And this time, attempt to stretch an inch or two further on the right side. Touch your right leg if you can. Hold. Two, three, four. Four, neck limp, seven, eight, nine, and again, to get the greatest stretch for your left side, bring your left arm way up over your head, 18, 19, 20. Now, slowly straighten to the upright position. Take your time doing that. And now, slowly lower your arms to your sides. Everything very slowly in yoga. Now, bring your feet together, stand still, and relax. Now, for a complete backward and forward stretch for loosening your entire spine and relieving tensions, we will do the chest expansion posture. Standing erect in a good posture with your heels close together, abdomen drawn in, and your chest naturally expanded, slowly bring your arms up from your sides. And as they come up, bend your elbows and bring your hands in 
so that your thumbs touch your chest, as in figure 16. The fingers are together. Now, slowly stretch your arms straight out before you. Do that slowly, stretch them straight out, and now bring your arms slowly back on a level with your shoulders. Continue to bring your arms back as far as possible, but keep your trunk erect and don't bend or slump forward. Now, clasp your hands behind your back and straighten out your arms behind you as far as you can without strain, but do not bend forward. This is the position of figure 17. Now, very slowly and carefully, begin to bend backward at your waist. Drop your head slightly backward, as you will see in figure 18. Keep your eyes open and feel the stretch and expansion throughout the abdomen, chest, bust, and neck, but do not strain. Now, slowly straighten up, very slowly, and begin to bend forward at the waist, and bring your clasped hands up and over your back as you bend forward and down as far as you can go. Keep your knees straight. Now, when you have come forward and down as far as possible without strain, Allow your neck to go limp so that the blood will flow into your head. Remain in this position of figure 19 for the following count of 20. Two, three, four, neck limp. Seven, eight, remain absolutely still with your clasped hands up over your back as high as possible and each day you will be able to bend forward a little further. 19, 20, now, very slowly begin to straighten up. Take your time, do this slowly. Keep your knees straight and your hands clasped. And when you are standing in the erect position, unclasp your hands easily. Return them to slowly to your sides. Just relax a moment. Stand perfectly still. Now let us repeat the chest expansion posture. Once again, very gracefully, begin to bring your arms up from your sides. The arms bend at the elbows. You bring your hands in toward your chest so that the thumbs touch the chest. Now, stretch your arms straight out before you. Get them way out, straight out. Now, begin to bring them back on shoulder level. Get them back as far as they will go. Now, clasp your hands behind you, but don't slump forward. Remain standing erect. Now, straighten your arms out behind you as far as you can go. Now, keep them high. Now very gracefully, gently, bend backward at the waist. Bend backward easily. Go back as far as you can without strain. Drop your head back slightly. Keep your eyes open. Hold it and keep your hands high. Good. Fine. Now, very slowly start to come forward and bring your clasped hands up over your back. Bend forward at the waist. Keep your knees straight. Your forehead goes down toward your knee and your neck goes limp. Hold it. Three, four, Five, let the blood run into the head and keep the knees absolutely straight. Ten, hold it without motion, absolutely still. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Fine, very slowly start to straighten up. Take your time, your hands are still clasped. You come up very slowly. And now when you're standing erect, once again, unclasp your hands. Let them relax at your sides. Good. Now, we are going to sit down as gracefully as possible. And a good way to do this is to cross your ankles. Do that now. Cross your ankles and lower your body. Do that now. Keep your hands ready to support the weight of your body if necessary. When you are seated, you will be automatically in a simple cross-legged posture. Remain that way with your spine erect. Remember always to Think gracefully and move with poise and balance. The body is the temple of the spirit and it must radiate health and beauty, for through it we will grow, develop, and mature. Next, for firming the thighs and removing stiffness in your feet and ankles and streamlining the abdomen, chest, bust, and neck, we will do the backward bend exercise. Stretch your legs straight out and swing your legs around under you. Do that now. Place your knees together on the floor in front of you and easily lower yourself so that you are sitting on your heels with the top of your feet on the floor. Place your fingertips on the floor on either side of you. 
This is the position of figure 20. Now, carefully inch your way backward with your fingertips and hands until you have gone back a comfortable distance. Keep your arms parallel with your sides and have your fingers pointing behind you. Now, we will perform the movements which you see in figure 21 by slowly and carefully dropping your head backward as far as possible and arching your spine way upward. Do that now. Head back, spine way up, but remain seated on your heels. Now hold this position for the following count of 15, 2, 3, head way back, 6, 7, knees together, 10, 11, no motion, remain absolutely still, 15, good. Now slowly raise your head and relax your spine but stay seated on your heels and keep the rest of the position just as it is. Rest a moment. If your feet are uncomfortable, you can come forward with your hands and raise your trunk from your heels for a few moments. We are now going to repeat, and this time I will ask you to attempt to move your hands backward a few inches further than the first time. Ready? Do that now. Move back carefully a little further with your hands. Arms are still parallel with your sides. Stop whenever it grows difficult as we never strain in yoga. Now, let's do the exact same movements. Ready? Drop your head backward and arch your spine way up and hold for the following count of 20. Two, three, the knees are together. Six, seven, stay on your heels and feel the stretch throughout the groin, abdomen, chest, bust, and neck. 18, 19, 20. Good. Now, raise your head first, relax your spine. Now, slowly walk in with your hands until you are back in the upright position of figure 20. Now, let's very briefly loosen and strengthen the ankles, feet, and toes by simply changing the position of the feet so that the toes rest on the floor and you once again rest by sitting on the heels. Do that now, carefully and slowly, and you will be in the position of figure 22. You are now resting your trunk on your heels, and the toes are on the floor. Hold this position for a count of 20. Two, three, four. Of course, rest only as much weight as you can comfortably on your heels, and remain absolutely still. Twelve. There is no machine or gadget that can loosen and strengthen your feet and toes as this simple movement. 20. Good. Very slowly raise your trunk, swing yourself around and sit on the floor once again. If your feet or toes are uncomfortable, gently massage them with your hands. The toes, ankles and feet are usually extremely tense and stiff and you must gradually regain your youthful flexibility in these areas through the yoga stretches. Now, sit in the half lotus or cross-legged posture, spine erect, and relax for several moments without movement. And now, an ingenious yoga exercise to quickly loosen and strengthen the entire spine. Extend both legs straight out before you. Do that now. Now, carefully cross your left leg over your right so that the heel of your left leg rests on the floor close to your right leg. Place your left hand down firmly on the floor beside you. And this is the position of figure 23. Now, follow this carefully. Raise your right arm and extend it straight out before you. Now move it slightly to the left so that it comes over your left knee. And now lower your right arm and hold that right knee with your right hand. These movements will lock the lower spine and you are now in the position of figure 24. Now we can twist the spine against this lock by keeping the left hand firmly on the floor and now let us slowly turn and twist your trunk to your left. Do that now. Turn slowly and twist as far to the left as possible 
turning your head way around to the left as though you would rest your chin on your left shoulder. Hold this position of figure 25 for the following 15 seconds. 3, 4, head way around, 7, 8, and feel the entire spine twisting, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, fine. Very slowly, turn your trunk forward, but hold the lock. Relax a moment. Now, let's repeat. Ready? Slowly twist off to your left. Get around as far as possible. Turn your head very far around. Now, close your eyes. Hold. Two, three. This is a wonderful movement for helping to reduce excess weight in the waistline and firm that area as well. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Good. Now, very slowly turn forward. Relax a moment. Cross your left leg back over your right, and once again you will have both legs extended straight out before you. Now, let us do the identical movements on the right side. That is, now cross your right leg over your left so that the heel of your right leg rests on the floor close to your left leg. Place your right hand down firmly on the floor beside you, and now raise your left arm straight out before you. Move it slightly to the right so that it comes over your right knee, and now lower your left arm and hold that left knee with your left hand. Once again, this movement locks the lower spine. Now, we can twist the spine to the right. Ready? Keep your right hand firmly on the floor, and now slowly turn and twist your trunk to the right. Twist as far to the right as possible, turning your head way around to your right, as though you would rest your chin on your right shoulder. Hold. Two, three, breathe normally, do not hold your breath. Seven, eight, feel the entire spine twisting, it should feel very good. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, fine. Very slowly, turn your trunk forward, but hold the lock as before. Relax a moment. Now, let's repeat for the last time, and this time give the posture your best effort. The further the twist, the more the benefit. Ready? Slowly twist off to your right. Get around as far as possible. Turn your head very far around. Close your eyes. Hold. Two, three, absolutely still. Six, seven, eight. Keep your mind always on what you're doing in these movements. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Good. Now, very slowly turn forward. Do that now. Good. Cross your right leg back over your left, and once again have both legs extended straight out before you. Now, bring in your legs and sit in the half lotus or cross-legged posture. Relax. We will finish with a complete breath. Sit erect. Index fingers touch the thumbs. Lower your eyelids. Exhale all air from your lungs through your nose. Do that now. Get all the air out of your lungs. Now, get set to inhale. Ready? Begin. One, two, abdomen out. Chest expanded. Five, six. Shoulders raised. Nine, hold. Two, three, release. Two, three, Relax easily and exhale completely, emptying your lungs. Nine. Without pause, begin to inhale. One, two, abdomen out, chest expanded, six, shoulders raised, nine, hold, two, three, release, two, three, relax and exhale completely, seven, eight, nine, Fine. Breathe normally. Keep your eyelids lowered. We have now completed this practice session. Relax and remain absolutely still for at least one minute.
Sit down easily and gracefully on your mat. Now we are ready to begin our series of three dynamic stretching postures which will relieve tensions and fatigue and impart new strength and life to every part of your body. This is the Cobra Locust Bow Routine. Stretch your legs straight out before you. Now, gracefully turn over and stretch out so that you lie on your abdomen and your cheek rests on the floor. Place your arms at your sides. Relax completely. First, for the most wonderful and immediate relief of tensions throughout the back, we will perform the cobra posture. Place your forehead on the floor. Now slowly bring in your hands and place them directly beneath your shoulders. The fingers of your hands will be pointing toward one another and this will be the position of figure 26. Keep your forehead on the floor. Now, in a count of 15, we're going to push down with the hands and slowly raise the trunk to your ultimate position so that you will be in the position of either figure 27 or 28. Remember, however, that the trunk will be continually curved and arched. This is not a push-up. Ready? Breathe normally and begin to raise yourself. One, two, slowly arch your neck back first. Five, six, now push down with your hands and arch your back and slowly raise your trunk, but very slowly and keep your head bent way back. Good, 15 and stop. At this point, you should be in your extreme position, regardless of how far up you have been able to raise yourself. Now, we're holding your extreme position without motion for a count of 15, and we have been holding it, and that's 12, 13, and your head is way back. Keep it back. Good. Now, very slowly start to come down. Two, three, four. Keep your head bent backward. Seven, eight. Your spine must be curved and arched throughout these movements. Now, bend your head forward easily, slowly, and at this point, rest your forehead once again on the floor. Bring your arms back to your sides. Turn your head and rest your cheek on the floor. Relax completely. Breathe slowly and quietly for several moments. Remember, the most important part of the cobra is to keep the spine curved and arched throughout the posture, since it is this movement that works out each of the vertebrae in turn and is so effective for removing tensions and stiffness. Now we're ready to perform the very strengthening locust posture. This time turn your head and rest your chin on the floor. Do that now. Chin rests on the floor. Alright, make two fists out of your hands and place them thumb downward near your sides as in figure 29. Now, push down with your fists and slowly raise your left leg from the floor as high as possible. Do that now and keep your knee absolutely straight as you will see in figure 30. Hold your extreme position for the following count of 10. 3, 4, as little movement as possible. The knee is straight. 9, 10. Good. Very slowly lower your left leg. Take your time. Good. Relax. Now, the same movements with the right leg. Ready? Push down with your fists and now slowly raise your right leg from the floor as high as possible. Knee straight. Hold your extreme position for 10, 2, 3. Keep pushing down with your fists. Six, seven, and breathe normally. Nine, ten. Fine. Very slowly lower your right leg. Keep the knee straight. Now relax for a moment, but keep your chin on the floor. And now we'll attempt to raise both legs with the knees absolutely straight, as you will see in figure 31. And we will hold for just five seconds. All right, ready? 
Push down with your fist and now raise both legs from the floor as high as you can. Keep your chin on the floor. Hold. Good. Now, very slowly lower your legs. Keep your knees straight. Lower them slowly. Good. Now rest your legs on the floor. Now turn and rest on your cheek. Relax your hands and go completely limp. Each time we do the locust posture, attempt to feel the stimulation, the strengthening and development throughout the muscles, organs and glands of the groin and abdominal areas. There are wonderful therapeutic effects from this posture. The last in this series of three exercises is the bow posture. This posture imparts a tremendous stretching and strengthening to the entire back. Rest your chin on the floor as in the locust. Do that now. Now, slowly bend your legs at the knees and bring your feet toward your back. Reach back with your hands and attempt to hold both feet. You may have to struggle a moment to do this. When you have hold of both feet, you will be in the position of figure 32. Your chin must be on the floor. Now, pull against your feet and slowly raise your trunk from the floor. Keep your head back and you will be in the position of figure 33. When you have done this, attempt to raise your knees and legs from the floor as you will see in figure 34. Keep your head back and hold this position for several moments. Good. Now, easily lower first your knees, if you've gotten them up there. Now your trunk, but keep holding your feet. Now, rest your chin on the floor. All right? Easily let go of your feet lower your legs to the floor. Do that very slowly. Now, when your legs are back on the floor, turn on the cheek and relax. Always perform the bow very slowly and carefully because it is extremely powerful. Remember always that it is the slow motion movements and the hold of the extreme positions which have made yoga the most effective of all systems of physical culture. Now we are ready to repeat this series of three postures. Rest your forehead on the floor. Slowly bring in your hands and place them directly beneath your shoulders, the fingers of the hands pointing toward one another. Now start to raise your head and bend your neck back. Ready? Begin. Two, three. Now push down with your hands and slowly raise your trunk with your back arched and curved. Eleven, twelve. Go as far as you can and hold. Two, three, four. Head way back and in the ultimate position your abdomen will eventually be raised from the floor and your elbows will be straight. Lower your eyelids. Breathe normally. Keep your legs relaxed. Now, slowly come down. Two, three, slowly keep your spine curved. Seven, eight, and now your head slowly bends forward. Twelve, and you rest your forehead on the floor. Now, turn on the cheek. Relax. Bring your arms back down to your side. The cobra posture is marvelous for a quick relief of tension in the back and can be performed when tense, nervous, fatigued from the day's work or other activities and for helping to overcome insomnia and promote a restful sleep. Now for the locust. Rest your chin on the floor. Do that now. And this second time we will omit doing the locust with the legs individually as we did before we will perform it with both legs simultaneously. Ready? Make two fists out of your hands and place them thumbs downward near your sides. Now, push down hard with your fists 
and attempt to raise your legs behind you with your knees straight. Go up as high as possible. Hold, hold. Good. Now, slowly lower your legs and control the movements as you come down. Do it very slowly. Good. Now, your legs touch, turn your head, and rest your cheek on the floor, and just go limp. Relax. The most difficult and yet the most beneficial part of the locust is keeping the knees straight as you bring your legs up behind you. You see, if you bend the knees, you will lose the effectiveness of the movements. Remember, the object here is to strengthen and develop weak and seldom exercised muscles throughout the thighs, groin, and abdomen, as well as to stimulate vital organs and glands. Next, the bow posture. Once again, rest your chin on the floor. Slowly bend your legs at the knees, bring your feet in toward your back, reach back with your hands, and hold both feet. Each time you do this, it will become easier. Your chin must rest on the floor. Now, pull against your feet and raise your trunk from the floor. Go easily. Now, once your trunk is raised, if you are able, raise your knees also from the floor. This is the position of the completed bow as in figure 34. Keep your head back. Hold. In the final posture, only the abdomen will be resting on the floor. Now, to come out of the posture, first lower your knees. Do that now. Lower your knees. Good. Now, slowly bring down your trunk, but don't let go of your feet. Now, only when your chin rests once again on the floor, do you release your feet. And release them now, and lower your legs slowly to the floor. Once the legs touch, turn your head on your cheek, and relax. I would like to point out that bringing up the knees to form the last part of the bow is actually an advanced posture, but it will certainly come as you continue to practice. Those of you who have now accomplished the completed posture should attempt to bring the knees together while they are raised from the floor. This will give you the ultimate in strengthening and developing the back, especially in the lumbar area. Now, the last time we do this series, I want you to give your best effort, and we will add several seconds to each posture to make the benefits greater. First, the cobra, and we will add a count of five so that each of the movements will now be performed in a count of 20. Ready? Rest your forehead on the floor. Slowly bring in your hands, and once more place them directly beneath your shoulders, fingers pointing toward one another. Ready? Begin to raise your head and bend your neck. Four. And remember to move very slowly because now we're counting twenty. Eight. Nine. You're pushing down with your hands and your trunk is coming up curved and arched, stretching each vertebra. Seventeen. And now you're all the way up. Twenty. Good. Hold. Two. Three. Four. Head way back. Six. Seven. Eight. 9, eyelids lowered, 12, 13, 14, 15, and your legs are relaxed, 18, 19, 20, good. Now, begin to lower your trunk, arched and curved, in exactly the reverse manner of having raised it. You're coming down, good, right. Now, bring your head forward, extend your chin way out, Gradually bring it in, and now rest your forehead on the floor. Good. Bring your arms back to your sides. Now turn your head on the cheek and relax completely. Allow your entire body to go limp. You will always feel wonderfully relaxed after completing this last repetition of the cobra. Next. The locust. In this last repetition of the locust, we want to hold the extreme position for a count of ten. Ready? Rest your chin on the floor. Make two fists out of your hands and place them as before, thumbs downward near your sides. Remember about keeping your knees straight as you come up. Now, 
Push down hard with your fists and raise your legs behind you as far as possible. Hold three, four, knees straight and make a real effort to come way up. Nine, ten, good, all right? Slowly lower your legs, control yourself on the way down. Right, very slowly. Now your legs touch, good. Turn and rest your cheek on the floor and allow your hands and arms to relax. You will find that this is also an excellent movement for reducing flabbiness and firming the upper arms. Finally, the bow posture. Rest your chin on the floor once again. Slowly bend your legs at the knees, bring your feet in toward your back, and reach back once more with your hands, and as gracefully as possible, take hold of both feet. This time, if possible, raise both your trunk and your knees simultaneously, but do this very slowly and carefully so that there is no strain, and we will hold it for a count of 20. Ready? Do that now. Bring up your trunk and your knees if you can. And if you cannot bring your knees up as yet, simply raise the trunk. Head way back. Eight, nine, ten. Bring your knees together slowly if possible and breathe normally. Good. Fine. That's twenty. Now, first lower your knees if they are raised. Now slowly bring down your trunk, but don't release your feet. Now when the chin rests, once again on the floor, release your feet and slowly lower them to the floor. When they touch, turn on your cheek, do that now, and go completely limp. You have now completed a dynamic, powerful, and highly beneficial exercise routine. Relax completely. Next, let's do the simple and highly effective movements that will help remove all tightness, stiffness, and tensions from your neck. Remain lying on your abdomen, but now prop yourself up on your elbows so that your elbows are resting on the floor. Keep the elbows about parallel with your body. Now, clasp your hands and place them on the back of your head, just above your neck. Now. Very slowly and gently, press down and bring your chin close to the top of your chest. If possible, have the chin actually touch the chest, but do not strain. You will now be in the approximate position of figure 35. Now, hold your extreme position absolutely still for the following count of 20. Two, three, four. Continue to press down gently with your hands, but do not force or strain. 11, 12, 13, your eyelids are lowered and you are relaxing. 16, 17, 18, 19, good. Now, unclasp your hands, but keep them in approximately the same position. Raise your head slowly. To accomplish now the position of figure 36, very slowly turn your head to the left, do that now, and rest your chin securely in your left palm. The right hand will now fit onto the back of your head. Keep both elbows firmly on the floor. Now, keeping a firm grip on the head with both hands, gently turn your head to the left. Move very slowly and carefully, and go around only as far as you can without strain. Stop at your extreme position. Keep your eyelids lowered. Hold. Two, three, four. Breathe normally. Six, seven, it should feel very good to stretch away the tensions which everyone accumulates daily in the neck. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Good. Now, keep your eyelids lowered and very slowly begin to turn your head to your right. The hands need hardly move. Just rest your chin securely now in your right hand. Place the left hand on the back of your head. Keep both elbows firmly on the floor. And now, use your hands to slowly and gently turn your head as far to the right as possible without strain. Stop at your extreme position. 
and this will be the position of figure 37. Hold. Two, three, four, five. Eyelids lowered. Breathe normally. Eleven, twelve. Keep your body absolutely relaxed. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Fine. Now, very slowly turn your head forward. Do that now, very slowly. All right. Now, place your hands on the floor beneath your chest. And now, slowly bring yourself up into a sitting position. Do that now. Move gracefully as you sit up. Now, move yourself so that you will sit in either the half-lotus or the cross-legged posture. Keep your spine erect. Breathe quietly for several moments and you will feel wonderfully refreshed. Seated in the half-lotus or cross-legged posture, we are now about to do one of the most dynamic and powerful natural movements which the body can perform, the abdominal lift. This is the only technique of this course in which the movements will be more rapid and forceful in contrast to the slow-motion relaxed movements which constitute most of the yoga postures. You will be asked in this technique to first contract and eventually to lift your abdomen so that you will be executing the movements which you see in figures 39 and 40. These are natural movements which you will perform easily and to tremendous advantage with a little practice. And these movements have such great therapeutic effect that there is no one who can afford not to learn and practice them. They will become an important part of your hygiene. Place your hands on your abdomen. Now, use your abdominal muscles simply to contract. That is, pull in your abdomen just as far as you possibly can without strain. Do that now. Hold this contraction. You will see the long view of this in figure 38 and a close-up of this contraction in figure 39. Now, easily release the contraction. Relax. Now, contract again. Weigh in. Hold. Now, instead of simply releasing, try to push out forcefully or snap the abdomen out. Ready? Try that movement now. Snap. All right. Now, contract. Weigh in. Hold. Now, snap it out. Good. Rest a moment. All right. Now, I would like for you to do three contractions and snap outs with me forcefully and in a definite rhythm. Ready? We're going to do three in and three snap outs. Relax a moment. Ready? Now, contract, snap out. Ready? Contract, snap out. Ready? Contract, weigh in, snap out. Fine, relax a moment. All right? Next, let us do a group of five of these movements. Breathe normally, and remember for those of you who want to reduce excess weight and flabbiness in the waistline and have your abdomen flat and firm there is nothing more effective than these natural movements. Ready? Contract. Snap out. In. Out. In. Out. Very forceful. Four. Way in. Out. Good. Relax. Now, let's take a complete breath. We'll get our oxygen back. Ready? Exhale through your nose. Get all of the air out. Begin to inhale deeply. Ready? Begin. Abdomen comes out chest expanded, shoulders raised, hold, release, and exhale through your nose. All the air comes out. Breathe normally. Now that we are warmed up, we will continue this contraction in groups of 10. If 10 seems to be a strain for you, simply stop whenever you have to. This is true, of course, with all of the yoga techniques. All right, ready, begin. Contract, snap out, in, out, in, out, way in, out, in, out, 
in, out. Seven, right, way in, snap out. Nine, ten, good. Relax. Just breathe normally. Now, I would like to repeat with you just a little more quickly. So get ready and let us begin. In, out, in, out. Very forceful, very dynamic, very strong. In, out, in, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Relax. Let's take the complete breath. Ready? Exhale through your nose completely. Now begin to inhale. Abdomen comes out. Chest is expanded. The shoulders are raised. Hold. Release very easily. And exhale completely through your nose. Relax. Breathe normally. The abdominal contraction has the most wonderful positive effects on many of the organs and glands of the viscera. Remember this while you're performing the movements and give them always your best effort. Now, stretch your legs straight out before you. Do that now, legs straight out before you. And massage your knees gently for a moment. All right, now, let us sit once again in the cross-legged posture because now we're going to try not only the contraction, but we will attempt the lift as depicted in figure 40. Now to do this successfully, you must first exhale all of the air from your lungs, and you must then keep the air out of the lungs. In other words, you will be attempting this great lift with absolutely no air in your lungs. Now let's try that. Ready? Slowly exhale through your nose. Now your lungs are being emptied. All right, hold the air out of the lungs and pull way in and up with your abdomen. Hold whatever your extreme position is. Good. Now release, release slowly, and relax. All right, the lift is, of course, much more difficult than the contraction, but extremely beneficial and will absolutely occur as you practice. Now, let's attempt to execute three of these lifts. Ready? Exhale completely through your nose. Get all of the air out of your lungs. Now allow no air to enter your lungs. Ready? Attempt to lift. Way in and up. Hold. Now, snap your abdomen out. Right. All right? Now lift. Snap out. Once more. Lift. Snap out. Fine. Relax and breathe normally. Remember, no air can enter the lungs while you are attempting the lift. And the lift will come with practice. Now, we want to perform this technique for the last time. When you have learned how to do the lift movements, then you should substitute the lift for the contraction each time you perform this exercise. Now we will do a final group of 10, very forcefully and rhythmically, and you may attempt either the lift or simply do the contraction if you wish. If you are going to try the lift, let us now exhale completely through your nose. Ready? So the air would come out. All right. Now, either contract or lift. Ready? Contract or lift. Snap out. In, out. Way in, out. Very forceful. Five, six. Snap it out. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Relax. Exhale completely now. Make sure all of the air is out of your lungs. And let's begin to take the complete breath. Ready? Begin. Two, Three abdomen out, and now chest is expanded, shoulders are raised, hold, let the blood take back all the oxygen, good, now let's slowly exhale, come down very easily, slowly, keep your eyelids lowered during the complete breath, good, now you are back in the normal position, relax, and breathe normally. Look for a moment at figures 41 through 47. These are the various stages of the shoulder stand which we are now about to perform. This posture has more therapeutic value than any other single yoga exercise. Now, extend your legs straight out before you and massage your knees gently. Now, using your arms and hands as little as possible for support, Attempt to lie down slowly and rest on your back. Once resting on your back, allow your body to go completely limp and breathe normally. Now, 
Turn your palms to rest firmly on the floor. Bring your legs together and flex the muscles in your legs and abdomen and this can be seen in figure 41. Now with your knees straight slowly raise your legs until they form a right angle with your trunk as in figure 42. Now swing your legs easily back over your head push down hard with your hands and raise your lower back from the floor as in figure 43. Now immediately prop your hands against your lower back and this will give you the support you need to raise yourself slowly and carefully as high as possible. You must stop at whatever point this posture begins to become a strain and simply remain still at this point. You will see a partly vertical position in figure 44. If possible, you can perform the completed posture seen in figure 45. This is a completely vertical position. Now, simply hold with as little motion as possible whatever position you are able to maintain. We are now beginning the timing. You should relax your body as much as possible. That is, do not hold yourself tense or rigid. Accommodate your back and your arms in the most comfortable position. Lower your eyelids. Breathe quietly and very slowly. This posture is always associated with relaxation. If you are in the extreme vertical position, your chin will be pressing easily against your chest. But this should not impair your breathing if you concentrate on breathing very quietly. Now, some of the things which are occurring as you maintain this posture are as follows. The blood is flowing temporarily out of your legs, and the veins and arteries of the legs can thus be greatly relaxed. We are going to hold for a total of three minutes, but you must come down whenever the position starts to be strenuous. We have now held this posture for one minute. Many of the organs and glands which are being continually pulled down by gravity in the ordinary standing and sitting positions are allowed to reverse themselves in this inverted posture. And this temporary reversal often proves extremely relaxing and positive for the organs and glands involved. Perhaps the most interesting of all of the many benefits of the shoulder stand is the increased flow of blood directed into the thyroid glands located in the neck. This natural stimulation of the thyroid glands has had the most remarkable results in helping to achieve normalization and control of weight. This is the posture I have in mind when I say that in yoga it is possible to control weight practically without moving. We have now held this posture for two minutes. Bringing an increased supply of blood into the head is excellent for the complexion and for the hair. During this third and final minute in which the shoulder stand is held, I would like you to pay close attention to your breathing. Incidentally, if your legs become tired because of the reversal in the blood circulation, you can very slowly move them from side to side, slowly. Now. Exhale completely through your nose. Very slowly begin to inhale and gently distend your abdomen. Hold for a moment. Now, pull in easily in the abdomen and very gently expand your chest slightly. Hold. Now exhale slowly and very completely. And continue to breathe in this manner whenever you are doing the shoulder stand. Three minutes have now elapsed and it is time to come down. You must come out of this posture exactly according to instructions and listen and follow them carefully each time you hear them. First, bend your legs at the knees, do that now, and very slowly bring your knees down toward your forehead as far as possible and this will be figure 46. Now, remove your hands from your back and place your palms firmly on the floor. Now listen a moment. Arch your neck backward 
and slowly roll forward, the object being to keep the back of your head on the floor. Do that now, slowly, gently. Your neck is arched way back and you slowly roll forward. Now, when your lower back has touched the floor, extend your legs straight out into the air, as you will see in figure 47, and now slowly lower your legs toward the floor. If you do this lowering movement very slowly, you will greatly tone your abdominal muscles. When your legs are almost to the floor, hold them for an extra few moments, just an inch or two from the floor, for the utmost strengthening of the abdominal muscles. Now, let your legs touch the floor. Relax, and allow your body to go completely limp. And of course, you are back in the position of figure 41. Each day, you will be able to perform the shoulder stand with greater ease, poise, and balance and soon you will feel completely comfortable while in the inverted position. The shoulder stand will become for you, as it has for thousands of yoga students, one of the most enjoyable and valuable of all exercises. Remain in your lying position. We will complete this practice session with the most revitalizing of all yoga techniques, the direction of the life force. Remain completely relaxed. And now place your fingertips of both hands on your solar plexus. The solar plexus is that delicate area at the top of the abdomen. It is the center or control board of a great network of nerves. And from the yogic viewpoint, it is also a type of generator from which great energy radiates to all parts of the organism. Now, we can direct this energy for a complete revitalization throughout the entire body and mind. Exhale completely through your nose. Do that now. Now, get ready to inhale very slowly and quietly with no motions of the body. Ready? Inhale. Very slowly. Now attempt to visualize a strong, pure white light which is being drawn into your fingertips from your solar plexus as you inhale. Now, retain the breath a moment. Transfer your fingertips to the center of your forehead. Do that now. And now exhale and visualize this same white light being sent from your fingertips throughout your entire head. Exhale completely. Now, return your fingertips to the solar plexus. Let us repeat. This time in counts of ten. Ready? Begin to inhale. Two, three, four. Visualize this white light being drawn into the fingertips. Ten. Retain the breath. Transfer your fingertips slowly and gracefully to the center of your forehead. Exhale. Two, three. Visualize this great white light, this pure energy, flooding your head. Nine, ten. Fingers back to your solar plexus. Ready? Without pause. Inhale. Two, three, four, five. See the white light being drawn into your fingertips. Ten. Transfer to the forehead. Exhale. Two, three, four. See the white light. Visualize this white light flooding the entire head. Fingers back to the solar plexus. Inhale. Two, three, four. See the white light being drawn into the fingertips. Nine, ten. Retain the breath. Transfer your fingertips to your forehead. Exhale, slowly, three, four, see the white light flooding your entire head, ten. Now, place your hands down at your sides and relax completely.
whatever you are now about to do, you will accomplish with 100% greater ease and efficiency because of the practice you have just completed. Each day that you practice, the great profundity and significance of yoga will become more meaningful to you. This is Richard Hittleman reminding you that as you continue to practice, you are sure to experience more and more the wonderful sense of well-being which will be yours through Yoga for Life.